What's up, guys? Dr. Corey here, helping you pick up where traditional physical therapy leaves off online, getting you from 60 to 70% to 100% with the rehab and recovery process. We are talking about different grades of sprains tonight. Okay, there's a grade one, a grade two, and a grade three sprain. And we're going to talk about how long a ligament typically takes on average to heal, depending on what grade of sprain you have from one to three. Okay, this month's video series focused on defining what a ligament is, right? The most commonly injured ligament, like we talked about um, last week, right? Which is the ACL and the kind of knee joint. Uh, number three is the different grades of sprains, which we'll hit on the head today. And then next week will be our last video in the series talking about how to properly treat these ligament issues. Okay, do you have any idea what grade of sprain is the worst? Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? We're gonna talk about that in detail here as we dive in. So grade one sprain, what is it? There's gonna be, we'll, we'll kind of use the example of an ankle joint as we go through these, because an ankle sprain is typically the most common type of sprain you're gonna get. Um, yes, the most commonly injured ligament is the ACL in the knee, but that's a grade three, usually full rupture. Okay, we're talking about a grade one or a grade two, which is not as serious as a grade three right? It's going to be the ATFL ligament on the outer part of the ankle, okay? Around that lateral malleolus circular bone. Happens most commonly in basketball and volleyball players, all right? Soccer as well would be a kind of heavy third there. Um, all right, so in a grade one sprain, there's pain near the ligament, right? So it's kind of localized to where that ligament is, all right? But there's no instability in the joint. The joint can still fully function. It can still work to its maximum capacity, right? You might experience some discomfort when you're moving in a way that stresses the ligament, such as like turning your foot inwards towards the other foot um, after you get sprained on that ankle. And typically the most common type of sprain was where the ankle and the foot are plantar flex. So it's like you're stepping on the gas pedal forward and it's turned inwards a little bit like this. And you kind of roll onto the outer side of it. Um, the pain's not debilitating at all. And the joint doesn't feel like it's going to give out on you or kind of buckle and lose and give way. Okay. That is a grade one sprain. There is very minimal swelling, if any at all. Typically no bruising. All right. And then next step is a grade two sprain, right? Grade, grade two is a little more serious than a grade one. There's more intense pain and swelling, right? Rather than bleeding and bruising in the case of muscle strains, okay? So that's how strains and sprains are a little bit different, right? Ligaments are inside of the joints compared to muscles that are outside of the joints. So that's why a strain, which regards a muscle more in detail, are a lot different than a sprain, which occurs in a ligament inside of the joint, right? So you get bloom-like swelling inside of the joint, and some instability. And that bloom-like swelling inside of the joint is called edema, all right? It's just fluid within the tissues, okay? Um, so with certain movements, you might notice that the bones tend to slip around a little bit too much. They tend to move apart too much because the joint essentially has lost a lot of its integrity, okay? Um, so if someone tears their ACL in a grade three sprain, they notice their knee just wobbles all over the place. It feels unstable. Their bones are moving excessively. That's gonna be your biggest differentiator from a grade one and a grade two sprain, right? You're gonna see that ankle joint tends to kind of roll around a little more loosely. Your balance becomes a lot worse. There's more swelling. There might even be some discoloration, maybe some light bruising, if anything. Um, and certain movements, like we said, are going to cause those bones to slip around quite a bit. Okay, so that's a grade two. Now we move on to grade three, the most serious, otherwise known as a full ligament tear or a rupture. Okay, it could be referred to as either or. In this case, there's joint instability, and it's a lot more obvious, right? It feels like the bones just move apart so easily and so kind of oddly right and then joint just doesn't want to stay connected there's some kind of disconnect like picture a bridge you know missing the middle of it it's kind of like that right where your actual tendons kind of separated in half um, excuse me not tendon ligament is separated in half and there's just no connection there okay so that's going to obviously affect how your bones function and how your joint actually works and how it kind of manipulates and moves around so let's use the acl for instance if you have a grade three sprain, which is a full ACL tear, the tibia and the femur bones that make up your knee joint will slide apart, right, excessively, and your knee will buckle and it'll give way, right? This will cause the most intense swelling out of the three grades of sprains um, that you're going to see, okay? So you're going to have a lot of swelling, typically some bruising. Typically, you're going to hear a loud pop sensation, almost like a gunshot kind of going off. And sometimes people look behind them, especially if they um, kind of tore their Achilles tendon, which would be a grade three strain. Now we're talking about a grade three sprain, not to get those kind of terms mixed up. And it can get a little bit confusing because it's one letter, right? A P to a T. Um, but anyways, um, that's typically what will happen, right? There's going to be a lot of swelling. Like I said, a lot of joint instability, a lot of pain localized to the area. And then that swelling can even kind of buckle from the knee, go and kind of trinkle down into the ankle and the foot. And it can become kind of a swollen foot over time too. All right. And there are tests you want to do 
to kind of see if it's a grade one, two, or three, but most likely from palpation, feeling for tenderness, looking for bruising, swelling, and then a couple of tests to move around the joint can really tell you what grade of sprain it has. But typically you want to get imaging done, meaning an x-ray um, or an MRI to show you as well um, exactly what's going on. So you can use your testing with the x-ray and the imaging um, to kind of get the best diagnosis, um, you know, the most specific, so to speak. So guys, um, just to recap, you can think of a grade one ligament sprain as a stretch injury, right? You just overstretched the ligaments a little bit too much and they just couldn't tolerate it. And that's why you kind of did damage to them, right? The ligaments usually stretched and swollen, but it's not fully torn and that change isn't permanent. So if you have a grade one sprain, right? Mostly everyone has a sprain at some point in their life, especially if you played sports as a kid or now as an adult, right? Um, it's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. You're going to fully recover from a grade one sprain. Grade two and three, the change usually becomes permanent, unfortunately. So a grade two sprain can somewhat heal, right? But people can sometimes regain that stability in the joint, okay? So that's okay with a grade two. With a grade three, right? There's some amount of instability that usually remains um, for your life, right? And then if it does, and it affects how you're kind of running, cutting, jumping, landing, right? Um, if it affects your life, then reconstructive surgery is usually often advised. And the only way you're going to know if you need that is if you try physical therapy, right? Talk to your physical therapist, talk to your um, primary care physician or your orthopedic doctor, and you get imaging. You got to do all three of those things in order to see if you actually are a good candidate for surgery, all right? So that is the difference between grade one, two, and three um, sprains, guys. Hopefully you found that helpful. Um, and hopefully if you're dealing with this issue, Right. You can then kind of look up further things to do and we can kind of talk about that and you can tune in next week when we talk about how to heal from these things in terms of treatment. Like what should you do for a grade one, a grade two or a grade three sprain? We're going to go through a three phase sequence that's going to tell you exactly what to do and what exercises to try. All right. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember at Trofner. Um, rehab and recovery, reassess and pick up where traditional PT left off with your rehab and recovery. And we help you guys as weightlifters return to 100 percent. All you need is a phone signal and a backpack of equipment because you can do it from online, which is amazing. Um, thank you guys so much again for tuning in, and we'll see you next week in healing ligament injuries through treatment. Take care and have a great one.